Hi there, I'm Mark Calls. I'm Head of Technical Regulations at the AT and I'm with Jordan Farley from Art Design Electrics. Welcome Jordan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So you have some questions, haven't you, about B7671? So with this whole new chapter around stationary battery storage, I'm really intrigued to know how it's going to affect us as installers. What are the big changes that we're going to see when it comes to how we install battery storage? Well, we've seen uh, what came through internationally was it was the IC document five, sorry, sorry it was IC 6036457, and that was setting the standard, if you like, for stationary secondary batteries. Now, since that came out in 2022, we've seen the PAS, the BSI PAS 63100, and in there we've seen lots of, I'm saying lots, but there's a 655, which is all about the positioning of batteries, don't have them in lofts, don't have them in bedrooms, yeah. Uh, on in escape routes, that kind of thing. So that's where we're going in the future. That's where that that the the the, the PAS, the publicly available specifications, has essentially set the route for where the industry will be going. So does that mean we're going to finally be able to enforce no batteries in lofts? Can you imagine lifting them up into the loft? <laughs> it happens a lot. <laughs> it happens a lot. I, I was looking at one last week that someone was worried about. Uh, it happens a lot, so I'll be glad to see it finally in this book. Um, Is there anything else around fire safety and things like that when it comes to battery systems? Well, again, there's a lot of inherent stuff within batteries if you buy the correct items from the reputable organisations so the reputable channels in terms of what's inbuilt into them. And there are obviously current requirements in BS7671 for where you've got fire risks and what you need to do with the installation. Can you tell I'm not answering the question? But... <laughs> okay. How how do you juggle trying to update a book like this when technology is moving at lightning speed, like with battery technology, for example? The tech is moving so fast, and sometimes for me it feels like as an installer, the regs are lagging way behind. It's the same with standardization across the board because products, entrepreneurs come out with new inventions and, and very quickly you'll see these products everywhere, particularly coming in from other countries. How do you keep on top of them? Well, BS7671 does have, ch uh, it, I'm going to say chapter 12, but it's section 120. And it's 120.3, which allows you to deviate, if you like. These are intended departures. So um, a straightforward departure from BS7671 would be you haven't installed an RCD when you should have done. That's a departure, you haven't thought about it. But an intended departure is when you intend to depart from BS7671 and you make a declaration, I've done something different, but ultimately the safety is still as it would have been if I'd gone down the conventional route. So with new equipment coming through, and it might be something you've invented in your shed, for example. It might be something that, um, but you get my point, as an entrepreneur, you could, could come up with something. So it does, it, it, standardization takes a long time to get there, and particularly where the, the goalposts are moving and technology is coming in and things are changing so quickly. It's not helpful, of course, to installers, but that's, that's, that is the answer. Well, it just means we've got to know our stuff and the onus is on us, I guess, if we're doing any kind of departures to make sure that whatever we're fitting is safe and compliant. Absolutely, yes. When I started, when, when I did my apprenticeship, I was on the Red Book, so I think seven, uh, 16th edition. Now we're on orange. Who chooses the colours and how does that decision get made? I'm going to say it's a well thought out process that goes on for many years. There, there, there's always been a, a, a sequence and the sequence has been around the colours of conductors. And then when you look at table 51 in chapter 51, we're seeing colours like turquoise and pink and orange. Now orange was a colour that was used, and I'm going to say back in the 80s. Oh, well. And um, that's why orange has been chosen again. We were talking about black at one point, and I'll put making that proposal forward, but it takes a lot of ink, a whole black page. I bet that's one of the most hotly debated choices in the book, is what colour it's going to be. It, well, it gets quite flippant, you know. The Scots and Scotsmen are shouting for tartan, yeah. and then they couldn't agree on the tartan. So, will there be any updates in terms of the certification and paperwork that we need to fill out after installing a battery storage system? From the point of view of BS7671, not specifically, in relation to uh, stationary secondary batteries. The, the likes of, of the other schemes, MCS, I'll cite MCS as one, they obviously have their own documentation for what they want from the installer. 
and whatever happens on their side is their side, but that, that is not within base 7671. So from the point of view of uh, a battery uh, installation, um, there'll be nothing f specifically from the BS 7671 side. We're like that. How strict is the transition period going to be? Is it as soon as the new book comes out, that's it, we've got to install to that standard, or will there be some kind of transition period? As we saw with the Brown book, there was a six month period. Now, there always has been a six month period. And this six month period, when I say this, from the date of, of, of publishing, you can start to use that book, but you can still use the previous one, if you like, or the one that's current at the time. And there's been a six month period where the old is brought in, sorry, the, the new is brought in, the old is phased out. And that allows you time to get on courses, get up to speed. It allows wholesalers to get the products on the shelves that they might need. And after six months, that's when you stop using the old one. But what had been happening was, for instance, if you had a housing developer doing a huge site of houses, and this might be planned 15 years in advance, and you're, you're nodding, you've come across this, and that uh, this was evident with the amendment in 2015 for plastic consumer units going into metal. And you had housing developers that were still using plastic well into the 2000s after that. So what happened in 2022 with the Brown book, that six month period, the standard was withdrawn at the end. So at that point previously, you could still continue to use both standards, but the previous one was withdrawn at that point. And that's the that's in line with BSI policy, essentially, with other standards, that the standard that previously is withdrawn. Otherwise, there's a lot of mix and match and, and confusion there. Well, that's great. I'm glad to hear that. Final question. <laughs> So I see there's a section, or I see there's some updates about uh, power over ethernet. So what are we gonna have to take into consideration now when running data cables, which may be used with power over ethernet? Well, this is, uh, this is section 716, and we saw this has come in from uh, international routes through, through the IEC and, uh, and, and uh, through Senelec. And principally, the scope of those documents have been around the power supply because often, with, with, if you buy an internet switch or something, you, it'll come with a power supply with it and you don't know where that's from. And there's been lots of discussion about the um, inherent safety issues within those particular power supplies. So a lot of focus has gone on the power supply for those particular types of installations. So that's where that's coming from in terms of 716 through IEC. And also there's heavy focus on, on in those documents on the cabling about the, you know, with, but not through IEC, but certainly in about the EN numbers for the particular cables and the, the sources of supply to. So is that to do with the bunching of cables and avoiding overheating and things like that? Have you seen any issue with bunching of cables? I have data cable in terms of overheating. Not at all. I mean, we don't do huge amounts of power of ethernet, but I've never heard about it. Yeah. Not in my circles too. I, I've not heard of any incidents and the guys I've spoken to, there seems to be very few over, over time. So that's really how it's evolved. Don't forget to pre-order your copy of BS7671 and you can get it from the it.org forward slash get the regs. And pre-orders available now until the publication date of the 15th of April 2026.